Facebook people, Ginger Kelly's people, that's Ginger over there in the little box over there. Welcome to Comic Spot, you guys. This is where this army veteran right here gets to vet out veterans of comedy. Today, we have an amazing one-year veteran of comedy, but she is a veteran of comedy because she's doing so much in the first year. And guess what, you guys? She's a veteran of the military too, so double trouble. Don't give us a hard time today. Let me read you her intro. She says, and I quote, because I don't steal. I've been doing comedy for just over a year. I've promoted and hosted, get this, over 30 shows my first year. Mm -hmm. Veteran of comedy. I recently joined a group back to the funny that's been performing up and down the East Coast. And I'm waiting for Corona to pass and we'll be out there again. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so delighted to have a veteran of the military with me to fight you men off finally. And a veteran of one year of comedy who's knocking out the scene. Oh my gosh, Ginger Kelly, you guys welcome her. Woo! Hi, hi everyone. Ginger, <laughs> hi. So, so I have to, I have to correct you. I am an Air Force veteran. Uh, so nothing nothing against my my Army brothers and sisters, uh, but definitely an Air Force veteran. Uh, when yep. I joined the military and I walked into the recruiter's office, you know, just when they had them all in one office, I took one look at the Marine recruiter and we kind of laughed at each other. We knew that wasn't a a fit. The Army recruiter was trying to get me to come by, but I, I walked on by. Uh, I did sit with the Navy guy for a little bit, but I, I didn't like their their dungaree uh, jeans. <laughs> the uniform didn't work for me, and I ended up at the, the Air Force table. So that was, uh, that was my selection process, was strictly Wonderful. based on uniform. <laughs> did I say Air Force veteran? I thought I just said military. You said army veteran. You My said army. Apologies. Air oh, Force is much better than the army. We all know that. <laughs> I'm going to make them mad at me now, but I no. would agree with that. I would agree with that. <laughs> I will say it. I went to Fort Ben Harrison, Indiana, and they had every branch of the service there. And I was like, why didn't I go into the Air Force? Yeah, it was, uh, I, I didn't join for patriotic reasons. I, I have to be honest, at the time, uh, you know, I was out of high school, I was out for, uh, probably a year or so trying to figure out something to do and you know was hanging out with my friends at the corner bar and I'm like yeah I, I can't stay here uh, and uh, went with some friends and we ended up on a military base and at that time I looked at the ratio of men to women and I thought it worked in my favor and uh, went and joined <laughs> wow. it, be it became pre patriotic but it didn't start that way well, that's smart because I started with patriotic and found out that people in Germany really don't much care for the American military, especially women. Right, so right. I was one woman there among 2,000 men, Ginger. Where did you get stationed? Well, I started at uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, which was a command base. So it was, uh, you know, it wasn't as military as we had prepared for. Uh, so it was... Uh, really like being on a college campus for a great part of the time that I was in. Uh, and then I did end up uh, stationed uh, at Rhine Mine uh, in Frankfurt. What so, years? I was there. I'm trying to, let's see if I, I went in and I did 10 years. So I went in in 86. I think I ended up over there, uh, I would say in the early 90s. Uh, I went over there right after the end of the Cold War. So when I got there, they had just started to do the, the base drawdowns over there. Uh, and I had an opportunity to uh, get over to Tempelhof Air Force Base in Berlin before they shut that down. So I uh, got to see some of that stuff before it disappeared. Uh, and then from there, I ended up in um, New Mexico, Alamogordo. So uh, let's go back to Germany for a second. Okay. I was stationed in Hanau, which is 23 clicks southeast of you. Okay, okay. 
Yeah. And I love the Rhine main air. I spent one day there waiting to find out where they were going to put this one woman. And it was <laughs> in 73. So when I got to Hannah, the other woman that was there left and it was me against all those men. Uh, it's funny. When I went over to Germany, uh, the plane that they had me on was filled with army people. I was the only air force person on that plane uh going over and it yeah and it was all guys at that point it was definitely all guys yes well thank you for your service ginger kelly it's amazing. oh well thank you that was the best 10 years of my life absolutely loved it what was your military occupation skill uh what was 391 was the the number but it was a data systems analysis so i went in from 86 to 96 so this is when computers were first getting integrated into the workplace so my job was to read um, those data cards with a byte ruler for an error. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's uh, way back. I was working on computers when it was just a keyboard uh, attached. There was no, no mouse. I remember the computer we had and it took up about the size of a studio apartment. It was okay. Right, and the, and the printers, the, the, the printers were in a separate room and they were so loud that you had to put uh, safety ear devices on to go into the printing room. Wow. I, those were the good days. I mean, back when we were military, there's so much camaraderie you have among your fellow military people. Did you feel that? And do you still feel it when you do veteran functions? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel it all the time. I love uh, when I get to do the veteran functions. Uh, I had a couple that were scheduled right before uh, the COVID hit or right at the start of the COVID hit. Uh, and at that same time, I had also been, uh, at the beginning of the year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So the combination of the two of them made me back out of the veteran shows. Uh, we had them scheduled throughout the summer, but they all got canceled, so. Um, do you mean to say you do veteran comedy, Ginger Kelly? I do, I do. Ginger. And I, normally, and I normally wear my camouflage, <laughs> so wow. for, especially for today, uh, but I definitely do. Uh, I've got, you know, there's just something, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a brother and sisterhood uh, when you meet somebody that serve uh, and they get it. Uh, so I can't put it into terms, they, they just know, uh, and you just watch out for each other, you know, take care so of each other. You mean to say that you're a military veteran like me you're, mm -hmm. you, you're a single mom like I was. Mm -hmm. You went to Germany like I did. And you yes. do military comedy now like I do. Yes, I'm your spirit animal. <laughs> yes, you're my younger version. If I had red hair and breasts, <laughs> I would well, be the, you. The, the red hair you can get in a bottle, okay? Yeah. You're, the breasts you can go to a doctor, but... These are, these are man-made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. So do you do a comedy show on your own that you produce or are you on somebody else? Yeah, so I mean, what, what ended up happening when I started comedy, um, like I, I told you, I've always been performing in, in one way, shape or form. I come from a, a family of performers. You know, I can go back as far as my grandfather, you know, off the boat from Italy playing a, a banjo in you know New York City during the Roaring Twenties. So there's there's a history of performing on both my parents' sides uh, of the family, uh, and uh, you know I used to host a karaoke show. My children uh, were raised in the in the theater. I've done community theater, uh, and so as the time has gone on, and now my children are older and on their own, it really was a time for me to finally do something that I wanted to do. So me I, too. Right. So I signed up for an open mic. I uh, wasn't really sure if I was going to like it. And the first open mic I did, I was hooked immediately. Uh, and what I've learned is it's really uh, being in the right place at the right time and, and getting those opportunities uh, by networking. Uh, and I had hooked up with some people uh, and very quickly on was hosting shows that they were um, producing. So it was a weekly, like within the first two months, I had a weekly hosting gig. Uh, and then that uh, evolved to becoming a partner with this person. So that's when I got in the production of it. And it was a weekly gig 
uh, that we were hosting on a, um, on a comedy cruise out of uh, the Southwest of Florida. So I was doing that every week uh, and, um, you know, eventually, yeah, and, and it was, it was a lot, you know, cause I, I have a, another job that I have to do to earn money. You know, I'm not making uh, this kind of money, but uh, it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Uh, and through that, I've met some amazing people uh, and then started to find my own venues separate from that uh, and host shows and book comedians. So, you know, I've, I've worked with, with bands before doing, um, you know, their promotional work. So this wasn't foreign to me. I just hadn't done it for comedy. So. so tell me about your day job. Are you a, a reporter with uh, Clark Kent? Yeah, I wish. I wish. Uh, I do uh, internet car sales. No so, way. Yeah, yeah. I so one-on-one -on -one cars or fleet? Uh, no, one-on-one -on -one cars. I, I used to. I, I used to do uh, online e-learning for corporations. So oh. I was living in New Jersey at, at the time, uh, working from home, doing that. Uh, I had an opportunity to relocate with my children to Florida. Uh, so I took my New Jersey job and came down to Florida. So I was living high on the hog for a little bit with that New Jersey salary down here. Uh, and after a couple of years of that, uh, the company I was working for uh, had shut down. Uh, so all of a sudden I found myself, you know, in Florida without a job. Uh, I went to get back into my field and I had to make a decision. I would either have to move back up north or find something else because everything had been outsourced to other countries at that point. So um, I had to reinvent myself again uh, at the age of, you know, 48 uh, and be landed in car sales and happened to be good at it. So it's been, um, I do well. That's amazing. I love that. Uh, so you're, you have three children, what ages and two. what sex? I two have two children. children. And what yeah. sexes are your two children? I have both a boy and a girl, uh, so I am very lucky because after the second one I was done, uh, there was no need for a third one. They don't come out in any other combination. Uh, there, uh, My daughter uh, is 25. Uh, my mm -hmm. son just turned 21, and uh, they're, they're just amazing kids. They're great. Are they being good? They, listen, my, my daughter uh, graduated from the University of Tampa. Uh, with a major in theater, a minor in music. Uh, she uh, is living out of Harlem now, uh, following her Broadway dream. She just was, she was on tour with um, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville musical until the COVID shut it down. So uh, she's got her thing going on. Um, right, my son, uh, he went off to college uh, for a little bit, uh, was going to be studying engineering. Uh, ran into some uh, financial issues, so he is back now, but he's got a full-time job and a, a great girlfriend, and uh, thank God he came back, because without him uh, during my cancer stuff, it would have been tough to get through. Where are you with the cancer? I'm good now. I, uh, I had started the radiation. They caught it very, very early, so I didn't have to lose my girls, which I was really concerned with, uh, but uh, they caught it very, very early. Uh, I had the surgery. They took out what they needed to take out. Uh, I didn't have to go through uh, chemo. I had to go through the radiation, though. So now all of that's done, and I just need to go back for my six-month checkups. Uh, and that's the way we'll manage this moving forward. And what do you have planned, Ginger Kelly, when the pandemic ends with your life <laughs> and with your comedy? You know, there's a couple of different things that I want to do. Like um, the, the group that I joined, the Back to the Funny uh, series, uh, this is a group of guys, a group of comedians that... Um, a group of guys? Uh, no, there's a couple of girls in there too. Not okay. many. <laughs> yeah. Welcome uh, to comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're a dying breed. But um, these guys are amazing. And uh, what I really like uh, with them is the com camaraderie between them uh, as far as supporting each other and uh, so we've got lots of plans once the uh, you know pandemic or COVID or whatever you want to call it once it's over uh, you know we just just need it for it to clear and we'll start having our shows uh, going on again so that's one thing the is other that, thing that is that is that like different people doing comedy or comedy improv sketch or what is it exactly it's 
It's um, their stand-up shows uh, that are going to be hosted um, from Florida all the way up through um, then Atlanta, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, and so we bring our comics, but there's also comics in the local area uh, that will pull in there as well. Uh, so like a rotating kind of crew. So um, that's what, uh, it, they're, they're great. It's going to be an awesome uh, event. The other piece of it uh, that uh, I want to do once everything lifts, it's, it actually, it's two pieces. One uh, is I would like to start doing uh, at least uh, a benefit twice a year uh, in support of breast cancer. Um, so that is, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it, where I'm going to do it, but it most definitely will happen. Uh, and then uh, want to get back on to doing these veteran showcases again. Tell me about your veteran showcases. Uh, the one that I was going to do, I, the first one that I did was at a, a VFW hall. Uh, I had um, the opportunity to do that with a comedian uh, named Lou Angel Wolf. I don't know if uh, you've heard of him. He's fantastic. Uh, and it, it was so great because uh, it's, when I meet veterans, they're primarily men. Okay, so when I see these uh, men, older men, uh, younger guys, uh, their connection with me as a female veteran is always a little bit different. Uh, and then we go into the types of jokes that we, you know, the, the, uh, we're always talking about the Navy's food, you know, how well they're getting fed. We're always talking about, uh, you know, how well the, the Air Force is, you know, like living in our condos and whatnot. I mean, I, I talk about being in Germany and, you know, being in my dormitory and I'm sound asleep and I hear, uh, you know, this cadence and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I look out the window and it's the, the army crew, you know, running KP in the morning while I'm still curled up in my air force, uh, you know, uh, Funny. bunk. So, um, I enjoy those the most, uh, just, I mean, prior to doing the comedy, um, I used to, in the town that I lived in, in Jersey, um, every year I hosted their Veterans Day and Memorial Day events. So, um, I mean, it's just something that's really just so true to my heart to make sure that when there are shows, you know, the flags are displayed correctly, that the, the proper military protocol is being followed in addition to the comedy. So whether that's, uh, you know, and depending on the event, whether it's the you know, the missing man uh, set up or the way you're reading a poem or those things just have to be right to me. Absolutely. It's great that you're carrying on those strong traditions people don't know about. So thank right. you for keeping that alive. Yeah, I have a friend up here in Tampa. Um, he His uh, comic tab is a uh, Zobo 69. He works at a veterans hospital here at a Tampa. So he's the one that was hosting uh, the veterans shows. Uh, and so once, once the COVID lifts and it's okay to get in there uh, into the hospital, we're going to be supporting him and those veterans. So I'm looking forward to Fabulous. that. Fabulous. You're my hero on the ground, boots on the ground in your air force. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we had boots. I had boots, but I, I preferred to wear my, my blue skirt and heels, but you know, I had boots. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So the show is a, a kind of a short version for you for the introductory. So my people can get to know and love you and your people get to know you a little bit better too. Cause I know it's on your Facebook page, right. but Ginger, I adore you and I want you back monthly. I oh, your I would, stories. I want I you to promote to what, monthly. every month. I want you to check in with something with me. Oh, I most definitely will. Thank you so much. Thank yes. And the so minute much. I get off, I'm going to message you and book August with you. All right. So I'm, get I'm ready because it's coming, girl. My God, I have enjoyed this so much. You are doing an amazing thing here, uh, interviewing comics that would probably never have an opportunity to be heard, you know, outside of their local uh, community. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. cheers to you. Thank you for, Thank for doing you. this. Thank you for noticing. Uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Ginger Kelly. You guys, Ginger Kelly, get out, get on and find her. How do people find you and help you? Okay. So uh, my Facebook page is, is Ginger Kelly. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, which is Ginger Kelly Comedian on Instagram. And uh, I mean, I've got, 
it's so funny. Once you and I booked this, I had instantly, I've got a, I've got a show tonight, which will be my first show back since the quarantine. Um, I've got a show in uh, Tampa uh, on Friday night and another one um, in Punta Gorda on Saturday. So I went from no comedy to three things this week. Uh, and my friend is calling it the Ginger Kelly, no quarantine comedy tour. Uh, <laughs> That's great. And, right, and he, he told me if I, if I get the Corona, he's spraying Lysol in my mouth. So, uh, <laughs> do you know, there are very few women veterans who are comedians. So we should I didn't realize that we should start a group. There's Jessica Wellington uh, at the comedy store. She's like a door person there, doorman. She calls herself a doorman. Okay. I don't. She is a doorman. And so you have to be so careful these days. And so she, you, me, and there are others that I can't think of, but we should start a group and maybe sometime we can do a show. Oh, female I would, veteran. I would, I would love that. I would love that. Let's do it. Listen, veteran power, girl power. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Well, I'll get a hold of, I'll get a, I'm already a hold of the ginger. I'll get a hold of <laughs> Jessica Wellington, Jess Miller too. Do you know Jess Miller? She no. owns a comedy club up North of like West and North of New York. I don't know where, but us four to begin with, that would be great. I travel. I'm good. Let's do it. <laughs> Got it. I'll let her know. Okay. This is going to be super dope. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to message you before I get on that other thing. Thank you so oh. much for coming on and letting me well, keep it short. Thank you for, for having me. And Every we'll, month. I'll see you next month. Yes. Bye, Ginger <laughs> Kelly. Follow Bye. her. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love you lots. Yeah. Everybody's talking.